hand. No Good doubt. match this. Yeah, it is, no doubt about it. And they're still out square. Five all, first to nine goes into the semi finals. Let's rejoin John and Willie. So, frame 11 gets underway. And as you say, Doogie, hard to pick the winner. Well, impossible to pick the winner. And there's so many little things going on here. We know that both these players can be upset at any time, but so far they're under control, they're playing well. And there's just a little tension in the audience, isn't there, Willie? You know, people wondering what's going to happen next. So far, all we've had is just superb snooker, match play snooker. Yes, yeah, yours used to get this kind of crowd on the edge of their seats when your friend and colleague Alex Higgins used to play. They always used to be wondering whether he's going to play brilliant, whether he's going to play bad, whether he's going to throw a tantrum, whether he's going to walk out. And, and uh, as you rightly say, the tension in the audience is great. And the tension in the commentary box is building because it's 5 all. And as you say, it's tough to pick a winner, even though for betting purposes, Ronnie would still have to be favourite. Well, it looks as though he went all out for the double there in the left center. Very risky shot to play because he wasn't going to get the cue ball safe. Maybe he's considered that the, the red closest to the cue ball, which is possible into the right center, is well worth leaving Ronnie a chance of. It's a very narrow angle. Well, he's thrown the gauntlet down to Ronnie here, and it looks like Ronnie's not going to pick it up. Yeah, I agree, John. He can't really play it as a shot to nothing. If he decides to play it in the middle, he's bound to stick a red on. And as you say, I think he might, what we say, bite the bullet and just uh, come off the pack of reds and put the white tide on the cushion behind the black. Very unlucky. Oh. Hey, I didn't think the clip was on, to be honest. But how unlucky is that to clip the green in? <laughs> very, very unfortunate. Yeah, how many times do we see it? This game's all about skill, but sometimes luck plays such a part. One. And that was very unlucky for Quinton. And an unexpected chance for Ronnie. Yes, Ronnie hasn't led in this match since the very first frame and third frame. He led 1-0 and then 2-1. And all the Four. rest of the match, he's been playing catch-up. Quite clearly now, this is a chance to get into the lead again for the Five. only the third time in the match. 
and the first since the third frame. Even though this pack of reds are slightly open, there must be a plant on here the way he's played that because he wouldn't have uh, played the white in that position without this being a plant. Yes, it's quite straightforward and can get onto the black as well. 90. He may even play another kiss here because only the red in the middle bag is available from the angle he has on the black. He's played it that slow, he may just be on the one at the bottom of the pack. 26. He's definitely on it. It's just a case of whether he's going to try and get on the black or go up for the blue. Ronnie's such a fantastic break builder that, uh, you know, he always sorts out the best option. And he felt blue was the better option to continue the break. Yes, with break building, obviously cue ball control is 32. the most important part, but shot selection as well is a, a big thing. And as you say, well, he, and I mean, okay, he's playing pretty slow today, but normally when he's playing quick, he, he sees the shots that need to be played and the reds that need to be removed. But today he's giving every shot due care and attention. He's played for one in the middle here. If he's on this, this will be a great shot. And by the look on his face, he's on it. What a shot that was. I think it's the positional what shot of the match so far, John, don't you? That was a great shot. Well, he had, what, two, three inches to play with? That was all. We always talk about Jimmy White and uh, Alex Higgins being the fastest players, but... OK, Ronnie may not have been quite as fast as Higgins at his uh, absolute best, but Ronnie in intricate situations like we just had there would play fast, whereas Alex and Jimmy played fast when the balls were in open play. As you say, Ronnie sees the shot a lot quicker than any other player I've ever seen. 56. 57. I've just got a slight angle on the black. And 68 points in front. There you see. Luke is required. And Quintin Hanwell, he must be sitting there feeling very aggrieved. Polly tremendous red, very unlucky to knock the green in, and he's sat down ever since. And well, Quintin had a chance of a century, the first frame of this afternoon's session. Ronnie with a good chance of getting one here. The quality is not slackening at all. Great stuff. 80. 81. Ronnie has actually already made 11 centuries this season, which is a record so far this season. Obviously, only halfway through it. Should he get one? It'd be amazing to think that it'll be his 227th of his career. 87. And he's only 24 years of age. 90. May have gone a little too straight. I could miss this because he's going to have to play it very powerfully. 
Yes, it was always going to be a problem with the pace he played it, but this match has continued in the way it left off. The standard is superb, the safety is superb. Chris Ronnie O'Sullivan, who now leads 6-5. And I think that...